What's up? I'm Brian Tong, and welcome to the Apple Buy. You know it's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, so let's get to the Apple stories. Last week, Microsoft went on the offensive with a new TV commercial showcasing an average girl looking for a 17-inch laptop for under 1,000 okay. bucks. For $1,000, they only have one computer available, and that's a 13-inch screen. I would have to double my budget, which isn't feasible. I'm just not cool enough to be a Mac person. Okay. With that green scarf wow. and a hairdo like that, she's pretty much right. Come on, guys, I'm kidding. And really, should I be the one talking about bad haircuts? Eventually, Lauren finds the laptop of her dreams for $6.99. And a little info for you, Lauren was in the acting classes I took several years ago. And yes, she's a great girl and a pretty good actor, don't you think? Now, Microsoft is finally doing a smart move by making people think about their wallets. And I don't see Lauren going back into an Apple store anytime soon. Now, Apple released the second beta of the iPhone 3.0 software, and for all you hungry app lovers, it will now support 11 pages of applications on the screen instead of nine. If you include the four applications on the bottom, there is now room for 180 apps. There's also preference for the store. That is blank at the moment, so more of these little tidbits keep coming our way. Now, are you having sleep issues? Not you, but your computer. Tom Merritt gives us some tips. One great thing about a laptop is putting it to sleep. You close the lid, pack it in your bag, and you save the trouble of rebooting it later. But if it doesn't go to sleep properly, it can heat up in your bag, burn your hand, or even damage your hard drive. I'm Tom Merritt from CNET.com. Here's how to troubleshoot MacBook sleep problems. The first step is to make sure you don't have an application running that's accessing the hard drive. If you're downloading a file over Wi-Fi, that can interrupt sleep. Playing music from iTunes or playing a DVD also can cause sleep interruption. Close programs to eliminate them as a possible sleep problem culprit. Bluetooth devices shouldn't wake up a sleeping computer, but some Bluetooth mice do, so make sure you don't have any on. And then go to System Preferences, click Bluetooth, click Advanced, or it might be called Settings for you, and deselect Allow Bluetooth Devices to Wake This Computer. Another issue could be the spotlight function. It's a handy way to search the hard drive, but if it's indexing your hard drive, the Mac isn't going to go to sleep. So wait for that to be done. If you're sharing an internet connection, a file, or even an iTunes library, that can stop sleep from working. Disconnect any users or turn off sharing to see if this is the problem. Another issue is external devices. If you have any USB or FireWire peripherals connected like an external hard drive, it may cause problems. Disconnect them properly, one at a time, to make sure they're not the problem. And finally, PCI cards. This was my problem. Expansion cards, like my EVDO antenna here, may have drivers that prevent the computer from removing power from them, thus stopping sleep. You'll need to look for updated drivers or just remove the cards in question. If none of this works, you may need to reset the system's power management. Look for our insider secret on MacBook power problems for more on that. That's how to troubleshoot MacBook sleep problems. I'm Tom Merritt, CNET.com. Thank you very much, Mr. Tom Merritt. And that was a pretty cool monkey shirt. OK, here's some other Apple Bytes we got. Macworld 2010 will be taking place in February instead of its traditional early January spot. It will be the first time in the show's 25-year history that Apple will not be at the event, but it lives on. And Apple has removed its Bluetooth headset from its online store. They could possibly be releasing a new one, but I just don't see it. Because did anyone actually buy the original one in the first place? The answer is no. All right, let's check out the iPhone app of the week. This one's a no-brainer. It's Skype for the iPhone. Now, people have been waiting for it, and Skype says it's currently topping iPhone App Store charts in nine countries. It has a clean interface, works only over Wi-Fi, and I was impressed overall by the sound quality. Jessica Dolcourt shows us a few unique iPhone features for it. The application also integrates with your iPhone address book, so pressing a button brings up all of your addresses. Unfortunately, right now with Skype for iPhone, you can only accept one incoming call at a time. Another all new iPhone feature is being able to actually change your avatar image by pressing this camera button here. You can take a new photo or you can choose an existing photo from your phone's camera roll. That's your first look at Skype for iPhone. I'm Jessica Dalcourt. Thank you, Jessica. It's free, so check it out. And you can call your grandma overseas with it. 
Now remember to send us your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com and tell us what you're thinking, and I do try to get back to a good amount of them. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and come back next time for another Bite of the Apple. Hi, I'm Molly Wood, host of the CNET Mailbag Show. It's the show where we read all of your email, from the ridiculous to the sublime, and we especially like the hater mail. Really. See it in high def at cnet.com slash mailbag.